Lord, we're so very thankful for the Word of God. We're so very thankful that you, Lord Jesus, gave your life for us. Yes, Lord. Thank you. And then arose from the dead that we can have this liberty and this freedom that we enjoy, this abundant life that you spoke to us about this morning. Lord. And we receive it. And we walk in it. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that's our teacher to teach us and train us. And walk with us. Thank you for revelation knowledge this morning, Lord. Thank you that our eyes are open and our ears are open. To hear and to see what you are saying to us, the church. To empower us, to embolden us, to strengthen us. To help us mature. To be that body of Christ that you've called us to be. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said? Amen. 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 Look with me, Matthew, the 15th chapter, if you would. Matthew 15. We're going to begin with verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Now, we had a series on understanding the will of God. And again, here it's pointed out, Jesus is saying, listen up, and don't just listen up and forget it, but understand what he's saying. Amen. Get hold of it. Okay? Verse 11, not that which goeth into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord was always teaching spiritual truths. But the disciples never could quite seem to grasp the spiritual part of it. They only saw it in the natural. We see that today a lot where people want to stay in the natural instead of looking into the spirit realm. But he clarifies it here because his disciples, verse 12, then came his disciples and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? And he answered and said, Well, go get them. We don't want to offend anybody. Well, I'm glad you're reading your Bible. <laughs> Y'all looked at me awfully funny. He didn't say that, did he? He didn't say, well, this is a, what do you call those churches? People friendly? Seeker. Seeker, seeker sensitive. He didn't say, well, we're seeker sensitive. Go get them back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, don't get mad at me. Praise God. I'm just telling you what happened here. Jesus answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father have not planted, they'll be rooted up. Amen. Let them alone. they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Amen. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. In other words, we don't understand. Tell us what you're saying, Lord. And Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? Indicating that they should have known. Do, you, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goes into the belly, is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth, they come forth from the heart. They defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. Out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. Thoughts, that's what we're speaking on. Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defiles not a man. So what he's saying here is that it's not the natural, it's the spiritual. He's saying that it's not the natural things that defile a person, but it is in the spirit realm, on the inside of man. We've got to deal with man's heart. The church has tried for years to clean up man by rules and regulations, but it only makes a religious train wreck. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. It's got to be God doing it from the inside out. Amen. It's not in how you dress. Now, you need to look nice. You don't need to wear clothes that are provocative or whatever. But... You know what? If somebody comes in here and they need Jesus and they're looking provocative, we don't throw them out. That's right. no, sir. Well, 
you got to change that person's inside and then they'll change what they're wearing on the outside. You understand that? Praise the Lord. I used to smoke like a freight train. Praise the Lord. Me and Walter probably remember that. Then, then I went to a pipe, smoking a pipe. But God dealt with me from the inside out. They didn't say to me, you need to stop that. Nobody said to me, even after I got saved, hey, you've got, you can't do this. But God said, lay it down. Amen. He told me to lay it down right after Walter bought me a nice new pipe. <laughs> Sorry, Walter. You'll have to talk to Dad about that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory. So I'm saying from the inside out, man has to be dealt with. I can't shake somebody into truth. I can't knock them out into truth. Nope. Hallelujah. God has to dip down in and deal with their inner man. Right? Amen. We've all had it happen in here. Yes, man. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise well, verse 19 says, Amen. Evil thoughts defile a man. That's cutting some of it out, paraphrasing it, but because we're speaking on thoughts this morning, look at verse 19 and 20. We just see there that evil thoughts found in verse 19 and then jump to verse 20, defile a man. Okay, Not just evil thoughts, but all of them do. But evil thoughts is the root. Hallelujah. And they defile a man. So we got to deal with thoughts. Amen. We have to know how to deal with thoughts. Glory to God. Amen. And Proverbs 4 and 23 says, I'll write up in that area, that guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flow the issues of life. Amen. Right? Sure. Praise the Lord. Because if you think on something long enough, you take that thought, you begin to talk that thought, and then it becomes an action. Yeah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Look there with me if you will. Romans chapter 12. Verse 2. Be not conformed to this world or this age, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, in the mind, there are, with the mind you think, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking is thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you're to be transformed by the renewing of your mind or deal with your thoughts. Amen. Okay? That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To live by faith, saints, you must have control of your thoughts. There, it's not optional. Amen, sir. If you're going to walk the faith walk, you're going to live the faith life, you're going to have to have discipline over your thought life. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thoughts can either encourage you or they can discourage you. They can actually be extremely damaging. Amen. And many times untrue. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I'll give you an example. Sometimes there are people that they have a complex, and then if they saw me and James talking over here, just discussing what we're going to eat for lunch, they would get all paranoid, yeah. and their thoughts would tell them, me and Pastor James are talking about them. Yeah. <laughs> and then they get all freaked out and act in an ungodly manner because of nothing but a lying thought. Yeah. Amen. We were just discussing food. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some crabs for Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. He was in a wreck and uh, on, in the ambulance. He raised up just enough to say, where are my crabs? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that's why we were laughing about his crabs. So that's just one example. Let me give you another example that if 
you have a pain in your body or a symptom, um, a stuffy nose, a cough, a pain somewhere, a nausea, then your thought comes to you, you've got this. You've got a cold. You've got the flu. I mean, it, that's what the thought comes. Now, it's pretty slick when it comes to because the symptom is very real. And uh, it's pretty slick when it comes, and then you find yourself agreeing with that. Yeah. I better do this. I better do that. Well, when you agree with that thought, hmm. you've taken it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You've accepted it. Uh, we're going to talk about taking it in a minute, but you've accepted it at that point. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And then it becomes very difficult to get rid of it. Yes, sir. Glory to God. You have to be knowledgeable in this. You have to be disciplined in this. Are we a faith-walking people? Yes. Or do Amen. we just say we're a faith-walking people? We are faith-walking people. Amen. Right. Amen. We live by faith. We control our thoughts. We discipline our thoughts to bring them into submission to the Word of God. Amen. We're going to talk about that. Okay? Praise the Lord. But I, I mean, I find myself doing that. If I, there's some kind of symptom coming in my body, and I'm thinking I'm agreeing with it. Until the Lord shakes me. I said, what am I doing? That's not mine. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, most times nowadays, I don't agree with it anymore. I recognize it immediately. But but sometimes it sneak up, up on me. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Well, thoughts are damaging. Look, look at this story in Genesis, the 20th chapter. Genesis, all the way back in the book of beginnings. Genesis chapter 20. And this is Abimelech. Remember when Abraham and Sarah was his wife? And Abraham told Abimelech that it was his, not his wife, it was his sister. And so Abimelech took her to be hit part of his harem. Hallelujah. God showed up and said, whoa, you're a dead man. That's somebody's wife, my anointed one. Glory to God. And so... Down here in verse 11, look how, look, look at the, how this started. And Abraham said, because I thought. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. Mm. Well, fear entered in. He accepted a thought, acted upon it. Yep. And got him into trouble. You see that? Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Yep. All right. Some of you are not convinced. Look at 2 Kings. This is spell it out for you. 2 Kings chapter 5. Remember Naaman? Mm -hmm. Naaman um, had uh, leprosy. And uh, verse 10, Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and your flesh will come again to thee, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away. Why? He's in the presence of the prophet of God, the one who has the power to cleanse him. But Naaman got upset because he go, told him to wash in Jordan. He said, why didn't he tell me to wash in a better place? <laughs> and he said, behold, verse 11, I thought, I thought, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper." So he thought he had to have a big showing from God's man in order to get what he needed. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. He presumed. Presumed. Presumption is a killer. Yes, sir. He presumed that yeah. this is what God would do, the man of God would do. And in his presumption, 
Because the man of God, or God, the representative of God, didn't do it the way he thought, he missed his blessing. Until he repented. Do you, do you see that? Now we do the same thing. Because we think God is supposed to do it this way, this way, or that way. We miss the blessing. Because we don't have understanding and the control of our thought life. And we allow our mind to dictate it instead of the power of God and the word of God. You can't put God in a box. He jumps right out every time. <laughs> Glory to God. He's a big God. He, he, he thought of everything and then brought it to pass. We live in a little small, dinky world compared to what he sees up there. You know, when you fly in an airplane, it's just a slight picture. On the ground, I can only see my immediate surroundings. But when I take off, I love to look out the window if I'm awake. I love to look out the window and you see in the houses and the cars and the people become so small. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see so far. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, you've got to get your thoughts in line with God's thoughts. Praise the Lord. Amen. Presumption will hurt you. Yes, sir. Now, here's the key in all this. This morning I want you to get. You have the power to control your thoughts. Amen. Okay? Let me repeat that. You, as a Christian, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, knowledgeable of the Word, have the power to control your thoughts. Yes, sir. You have a choice. Yep. Now, I know Willie's been going to Manti Glens for a long time ministering. Pastor James goes over there and ministers and flow. And they'll tell you that Manti Glens is full of people that can't control their thoughts. Yes, sir. They go in there because they, they want to be a certain way, but their thinking drives them another way. Right. Hallelujah. They don't understand that if they are saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, the Word of God in their heart, they have the choice to stop the wrong thoughts. Yes, sir. But Satan has them convinced that he's going to do it to them, and I mean that the thoughts are theirs, and they can't do anything about it. Right. And the doctors don't know any different because they're going from a natural point of view. Remember about what goes in the mouth instead of what comes out. They're going from the natural point of view because that's all they know. Yep. And so they just sedate them. Yep. Make them zombies. Yep. Lord help us. Lord help us. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Hmm. You have the ability, the right, the power, the authority to control what you think about. Praise the Lord. I want to show you that. Look at Isaiah 55. Are you still with me? I might have quiet this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55, verse 7. God is speaking here. Verse 7, Isaiah 55, 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Okay, let's look at that. It says... Let the wicked person forsake, get rid of, turn away from, get, get it out of their life. What? Well, his way and what else? His thoughts. This is Old Testament. And the Old Testament is telling you, you can choose what you think. Hallelujah. Don't let Satan deceive you to think. You don't have any choice. Those thoughts just come and you can't do anything about it. Uh -huh. Come on, Pastor. Glory to God. If you get a hold of this, it'll set you free. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm reading in that scripture, and it goes on talking about God's thoughts, not your thoughts. However, 
We have the mind of Christ. New Testament, we have the mind of Christ. Okay? So, it is true if you're wicked, you don't have God's thoughts. But we're not wicked. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen. Rightly divide the word of God, okay? Praise the name of Jesus. All right, look at Psalm. Psalm 119. Praise him. Praise him. Don't you love the word of God? Yes, sir. Psalm 119, verse 59. The psalmist says, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto your word. Amen. That means he had a choice. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. That means, hey, look, I took inventory and I thought and I decided I'm going to go with the word. Amen. Do you see that? Yes, sir. This Old Testament. If they can do it in the Old Testament, how much more power do you have to do it as a born again new creation? Mm -hmm. Hello? Praise Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians 13. Let's some of you not convinced. You say, Pastor, that's all Old Testament stuff. 1 Corinthians 13. Talking at the love chapter. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13, and we read verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I did away with these things, including childish thoughts. Do you see that? Yes, sir. This is the word of God. Quit letting Satan beat you up telling you lying thoughts. Yeah. Hallelujah. Put a stop to them. When he tells you you're broke, say, who said? Right. Hallelujah. God didn't tell me that. Who told you? Your checkbook? Well, God didn't tell me. Until God tells me I am prosperous. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Do you see that in verse 11? If you want to be a child, so, so you can also understand out of this verse that uh, getting a handle on your thoughts is involved in maturing as a believer. In other words, the baby Christian is still going to have some problem with their thoughts. You're going to have to help them. But as you grow up in this, you put away those thoughts. Yes, sir. You understand what God's word says and you go with that. Just like the psalmist said, I thought about my ways and I turned to your testimony or your word. Oh, glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right, Matthew, Thank you, Lord. chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. We're getting there. Thank you, Lord. Matthew, chapter 6. Are you with me? Yes. Sir. We're going to begin with verse 25. Jesus is talking. Therefore, I say unto you, this is instruction from the Lord. Amen. Take no thought, hallelujah, for your life. Okay, when he says take no thought, and he's telling you don't take this thought, then you could easily understand by him having to say don't take a thought that you could take the thought. You have the choice. Right? right? You hear what I'm saying? Because he has to say to us, take no thought for your life, means I have the ability to take that thought or to get rid of that thought. Right? right? Now he's talking about provision here. In verse 27 he says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his statue? Well, in other words, which of you, by taking thought, taking hold of that thought, is going to make it any better? It's just going to worry yourself silly. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Verse 31 tells us the key here. Therefore, take no thought, saying, 
Because what happens is when you take the thought, then you immediately say it. I feel like I'm getting sick. I mean, that's what you say when a symptom comes on, you know, and you agree with that thought. You take that thought. Boy, I'm broke this week. You've taken that thought. You're believing the thought more than you're believing the testimony of God. All right. Amen. Now listen, it's easy to believe those thoughts and take them because they're very real and they're constant. Yeah. They harass you. Especially pain in your body. Oh, yeah. But you got to grow up in this. Yes, you got to realize who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You're able to say to that, instead of saying the thought and taking the thought, you take the testimony of God and say, no. By his stripes, I was healed. Thank you. Hallelujah. When the thought says, oh, you're going to be in the hospital. You're going to have to go through this and go through that and prolong medication. And the thought is coming. And then you have a choice. You can take it and repeat it. And tell everybody, pray for me because I've got to go do this. Or you can say, no, I'm not taking that. Amen. I'm going to take what the Word of God says. Right. This is the difference in life and death, saints. I'm not just telling you this because it's theory in my life. I'm telling you because it works. Yeah. It's God's word. And God cannot lie. And if you'll put a little bit of effort, actually it'll take a lot. If you'll expend your effort to exercise godliness in these things, instead of expending your effort, to figure out how you're going to budget or how you're going to do this or how you're going to stay well or how you're going to go shopping today or how you're going to go to the Bahamas or whatever you want to do. Instead, expend your time and your energy to being godly. Amen. You'll have life abundance. Hallelujah. You'll have all those things and more, but they'll be from God instead of you making it happen. He was telling me I'm running out of time. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 real quickly. You know this scripture. But we're going to go over it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh. That's not where we do our warfare. Not what we put in the mouth. What comes out. It's a spiritual warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Not machine guns and bombs and grenades. But it's mighty through God for the pulling down of these strongholds that have kept us in bondage. And want to try to keep us in bondage further. Here. Verse 5. Here it is. Obvious choice here. Obvious that you have the power to do something about it. Casting down imaginations. That's thought. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the word of God. Amen. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And Christ is the word. Glory to man. Do you see that? So quickly, four things I want you to do. Real quick. Proverbs 30 and 32. I'm out of time. Proverbs 30 and 32. This will tell you. This is how to handle it. What to do. How to get a hold on this. Praise the Lord. It's not enough to know that it works for you. You've got to know how to work it, right? Right. Proverbs 30 and 32. This is your first step. If you have done foolishly in lifting up yourself, or if you have thought evil, if you have thought evil, lay your hand upon your mouth. Amen. Shut up. <laughs> Don't say it. Get rid of it. Deal with it. Now let me tell you this real quick. Like, you can't deal with the thought by thinking against it. You can. Mm, oh, it doesn't work. That thought will whoop you every time. You've got to say the word of God out of your mouth. If you're riding down the road, if you're in the house, wherever you are, get. If you're going to be embarrassed by saying it, get to somewhere you can. Go to the restroom. Do whatever you got to do. 
But to get rid of that thought, you've got to put the Word of God. Take the Word of God and silence that thought. You may have to do it many times. You may have to do it many days, many months. That's about how bad that stronghold is. But put your hand over your mouth before you say that thought. Don't do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs, why are you in Proverbs 16? Quickly. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit your works <laughs> unto the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Hallelujah. In other words, give yourself wholly to Jesus, to the Word of God. Hebrews 4, 12. I'm telling you how to deal with this. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is alive, quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, that's your innermost being, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner, distinguisher of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God is the answer to deal with thoughts. And you must say it out of your mouth to stop the chain of thoughts harassing you. One last scripture, Isaiah 26. I'll let you go home. Isaiah 26. Verse 3 and 4. Now will keep him in perfect peace. How many wants perfect peace? Amen. You know, when your thoughts are raging in an evil manner, it is no peace in the house. No, sir. No Hallelujah. Now will keep him in perfect peace whose mind, whose thoughts are stayed on thee. Because he trusts in thee. That's the root. Because you believe God. You believe God more than all the attack of the enemy that's harassing you, assaulting you. Hallelujah. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah, there's your everlasting strength. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. That's exciting, isn't it? You have the ability to stop the thoughts that have been harassing you. Now, some of them are habitual. You understand that it takes, I can't remember, I think it's seven days, 21 days to break a habit. Okay, so... When that thought has been habitual and you've been pampering it like your pet demon, you know, oh, yeah, I know, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm terrible, that's all, yeah, I understand. You know, you're just loving on it and petting it and, and welcoming it in your house. You've been doing that for years. Just because you say one scripture, that thing's going to laugh at you. You're going to have to stand firm, plant your feet on solid ground, and let that devil know you believe what you're saying when you say the word of God. Amen. And you're done with it. Right. And you'll break that habit. Amen. Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Glory to God. God is good in there. All the time. Let's stand up. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Thank you. We thank you that your word reveals to us the authority that's been given to us. That we can live a peaceable, prosperous, abundant life. And so, Lord, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to help us carry it out. And to walk this walk of faith, Lord. Not fearful. Not worrisome. Not shying away from anything, Lord. But doing the will of God. Proving what's that good, acceptable, and perfect will of yours, Lord. Life in abundance. Perfect peace. As we walk this walk. Father, I pray a special blessing on these saints. I thank you, Lord, that you brought them here to hear your word. That you've implanted them and, and joined them to this body, local body of believers, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that you empower them with supernatural power to stop the harassment of the enemy in their thought life, Father. This day we cut the devil off in Jesus' name. Whether it be sickness, disease, whether it be poverty, whether it be hatred, whether it be unforgiveness, whatever the problem, Lord, we sever it. And all its lying thoughts, in the mighty name of Jesus, and by the blood of Jesus. And we give you all the glory and all the praise.
In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Why don't you hug on somebody?